Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we are going to be taking a look at one really awesome air rifle. This is a Rapid Air Weapons HM1000. And uh, guys, Rapid Air Weapons is a really, really interesting company. They're making a lot of really, really accurate, very, very usable air rifles in a wide variety of different calibers. We're going to talk about them a little bit more as we go. Uh, but first, we, we're going to take a couple of shots here. Um, this particular unit is a 22 caliber air rifle. I think we're going to try our hand at some dinosaur hunting here with the RAW. I'm going to refer to it as the RAW. Short for rapid air weapons, obviously. All right, we've got on the right a Velociraptor. Let's say hello to him. Whoa! <laughs> All right, there's a Velociraptor. That's not bad. And then to his left, we've got a Pterodactyl. He's spreading his wings like he wants to come after us. Let's see if we can dome him. There's a thin little head there. Ooh, look at that. Nicked him right beside the head. That's a tiny little target about the size of a pea. Let's try that again. See if we can get a headshot on the Pterodactyl. And guys, if you can't tell, these guns are accurate. right in the face. He even went flying, look at that. <laughs> okay, we've got a Stegosaurus. Let's see, center mass on the Stegosaurus. All right, not bad on the Stegosaurus. All right, we've got a Triceratops. Out of here. All right, and this is the one that kind of breaks my heart the most is our Brachiosaurus. Now, you know, a Brachiosaurus doesn't deserve to get shot, but you know, he's guilty by association. So we're gonna go ahead and take him out. I'm gonna try to hit him in the head here. Oh, that's a tiny target. Right over the top of his head. Let's see if we can get him. Right in the head. All right, this is a 12 shot repeater. I'm gonna go ahead and um, shoot the rest of the shots in this magazine and we'll talk a little bit more about it. How about an apple? That was easy. All right, down on the ground, we've actually got a little pumpkin patch down there, some miniature uh, candy pumpkins. Let's see if we can hit some of our pumpkins down here. God, this thing is just so accurate. <laughs> We've got golf tees down there with our little pumpkins on it, just for fun. Oh yeah. All right, one more shot. And one hiding in the bushes down there. Man. What a wonderful trigger, smooth toggle. This is a really, really awesome air rifle, guys. And if you don't know about rapid air weapons, which I, I assume that a lot of guys are in the air gun world know about rapid air weapons, but Martin Rutherford is the guy that is responsible for rapid air weapons. And what an awesome setup here. Uh, there's a lot of interesting features, and I do have a bit of a cheat sheet because there's kind of a lot of things to discuss, but I'll try to keep it brief. Um, this is the LRT configuration, which is the long range target configuration. So you basically have this really awesome stock, which is, it pays homage to the original raw stocks. However, it's got a couple of modifications that they've made to the stock um, to make it a little bit more usable. You have adjustable comb height. The recoil pad can be adjusted up and down on the rear. You've got space along the bottom of the stock that is truly flat, okay? and it uses M-Lock rails. So this is one of the first air rifles of this type that you can actually now, due to the M-Lock rails, add rail sections and add your bipods and things. This has got an Atlas bipod on there. Um, this one has an Atlas monopod, which of course we're not using. We're using this uh, Coltac bag. But you can see that with the M-Lock attachments with these rail systems you can put on the bottom, you can run your monopod if you want. You can add your rail systems on the bottom for your bipod. 
you know, a lot of adjustability. This is obviously a laminate stock, so it's also going to hold up really well because this type of air rifle is really good for hunting purposes as well as target shooting. So I guess really let's talk about accuracy because, man, um, so we collected some chronograph data and we, you know, shot some groups with this particular gun. And uh, so at 50 yards, um, with the worst group that we got at 50 yards, and, and we shot four groups, uh, was 0.538, so just over a half inch, and that was the absolute worst group that the gun shot at 50 yards, and that was with unsorted pellets. Now, once we sorted the pellets, uh, <laughs> yeah, this thing really started to tighten up a lot when you start sorting the pellets for more consistency. Uh, with the unsorted pellets hovering around a half inch, but with the sorted pellets at 50 yards, uh, we were hovering, the best group was 0.176 inches. So if you measure the group and then you subtract 22 caliber from the group for a 22 caliber pellet, this is a 25 grain skirted Diablo, you get less than the diameter of the bore. Okay, so you literally talk about splitting hairs. I mean, that is literally, when you talk about ragged hole one-shot group, that's what you're talking about. Now, at 100 yards, I have to admit, when they were telling me this thing was, could group really well at 100 yards, I was kind of like, eh, I don't really know, you know. I, I mean, yeah, I know they're really accurate. You know, these do utilize a polygonal rifled barrel, which is very, very, very consistent. Really good velocities that you get in the polygonal barrel. It is a carbon fiber wrapped polygonal barrel with a carbon fiber wrapped moderator, so it is very quiet. And also the tank is a carbon fiber wrapped tank. All of those things decrease weight and add a heck of a lot of strength. Okay, so at 100 yards, all right, and then we're just talking about accuracy here, because I think that, that really with this, this air gun, that's one of the hallmarks of what this air gun can do is it's accurate, okay? Um, with the accuracy in that department, with non-sorted projectiles, uh, the worst group was 1.466 inches, so just under inch and a half group, and that's just out of the 10 unsorted projectiles. You know, some of them might have skirt, uh, you know, deformation. You know, when they rattle around in these tins, they get beat up a little bit, and sometimes, obviously, especially when you're talking a 100-yard shot with a skirted projectile like that, it can really throw the accuracy off, but even still, it still shot great. With sorted projectiles at 100 yards, that's where it really, really started to shine with the best group at 100 yards measuring 0.377 inches. So that's excellent. That is stupid good accuracy, very good accuracy. You're talking the kind of accuracy that literally you could set dimes on the berm and shoot holes in dimes uh, from that distance. So you're talking less than a dime, which is very, very small. So for hunting purposes, really, really good for small game. Uh, you know, squirrels, rabbits, maybe even getting up into like a possum or a raccoon with good shot placement. Uh, it's not really intended for large game. So we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, so this is the 22, but on these, on these raw HM1000s, uh, they're available in the 177, obviously, uh, all the way up to 357 caliber. So you have a 22, a 25, a 30, and a 357. Um, now, if you single load some of the projectiles, you can run solids in this particular air rifle, and obviously you will get a little more, I guess, energy, okay? You may have to tune the gun a little bit, uh, you know, to kind of get it to do that, but you can run solids. Now, obviously with this magazine, it does use a 12-shot rotary magazine, okay? And you, you only can run certain length of uh, pellets, obviously, in this type of a magazine. It's, it's only... It's only a detriment if you treat it that way, but I know some people like to run solids. You can run solids single shot if you wish, and then obviously you run the pellets in the magazine, which is pretty common uh, for what you'll see in these. Um, pretty cool, these are 100% made in the USA, and they are assembled by Martin Rutherford and tested by Martin Rutherford. Um, Air Force Air Guns owns RAW now, and one thing I wanna mention and, and everything is that the only reason is to increase production capacity to allow them to make more air guns, but Martin is still in control of everything. The quality of these guns is not going down because I know when you throw around the name Martin Rutherford in the air gun world, it carries a lot of weight, and I know there's probably people that are thinking, oh, well, the Rawls aren't going to be any good now because someone else owns a company or whatever, but that's not the case at all. All it is is so that Martin can cl more closely control the quality of the units and 
oversee the production of the units and hopefully a little bit more capacity so you can put out more air guns to people, get these guns out into the hands of other shooters. They do offer a base model of this gun that doesn't use a laminate stock that is a little bit on the lesser expensive side that, that they'll be offering. Um, this particular gun, I want to say retails for a little over 2200 in that ballpark. And obviously you go adding like Atlas bipod, Atlas monopod, attachments, rail sections. Uh, that is an, an additional cost. This is a high-end air rifle that is intended for high-end use, bench rest shooting, competition, hunting, or just somebody who's a discerning air gunner that wants a really, really good air rifle that is completely American-made and produced and assembled and tested. Uh, each one of these guns is assembled and tested uh, by Martin for accuracy, and if it doesn't live up to their standards, they'll rebuild it. They'll they'll figure out what's going on, but they all have to pass a rigorous accuracy standard before they're even sent out the door. So th these guys are really putting together some great looking air rifles. They look great. They balance great. The triggers are awesome. Um, this is actually a uh, two pound trigger that's in this gun. It's actually a heavier trigger. Uh, they do make some lightened triggers you can put in this thing or just the trigger down and get it really, really stupid light. But even at two pounds, man, it's just a, it's a great trigger. Um, we do have some challenging targets put out there. And uh, Chad shot these just wonderful 100 yard groups out of this. And uh, I think what we're probably gonna wind up doing here, I'm gonna let Chad get behind the gun. And I've set, I've got some challenging targets down there at 100 yards that I want Chad to shoot. Uh, I do wanna mention this optic just very quickly, this little Leopold here. And the reason I wanna mention it is because this is an optic that Chad has used on a variety of his different 22 builds. And because of how thin the duplex is in the center, it, you really can shoot some really tight groups with this, and it's just a wonderful type of optic to put on a rimfire gun or on, a, uh, on an air rifle, and it's a, it's a Leupold VX2 and a 6 to 18, okay? Really, really nice piece of glass that we're running on this particular uh, gun. I mean, these particular air rifles are excellent. They are pretty much among the top dogs of air rifles as they're made period. I mean, if you buy a, a raw, it's literally going to be one of the best, most accurate and best air rifles produced today. I mean, they're, they're right in line with FX's. They're right in line with that typical type of quality that you would expect to see. And, uh, you know, they, they literally are the top of the heap for a production air rifle in terms of what's available now. So really cool. We want to show it off a bit. I'm going to let Chad shoot it a little bit. I think he, uh, He's gonna like what I've got planned for him down there. I mean, at 50 yards, guys, just like we talked about with the accuracy there, I mean, those groups are, are so tiny. I mean, literally one whole accuracy just about uh, with sorted pellets. Uh, the pellets that we ran are the exact Jumbo Monster Diablos, and that is a 25.39 grain, to be exact, pellet, okay? Really, really cool stuff. Um, I'm gonna let Chad take a few shots and I want him to see what I've got going on for him down there. All right, guys, I'm gonna take a few shots with the uh, HM1000X for X-Ring, because this thing is that accurate. It is so stupid crazy how accurate this rifle is. Um, I'm gonna take some shots at 100 yards. A um, Couple things Eric forgot to mention. We did do quite a bit of sound metering with these uh, 22 cal pellets here uh, with the integral moderator. And we were seeing 128.5 dB at the muzzle using the mill standard configuration. And we were seeing 119 at the ear. So pretty much right in line with any 22 caliber rifle that you would see on the market for the most part at the ear. Um, velocities, <clears throat> we were told that with a little bit better setup, uh, just in different parts of the country, you should be seeing about 950 feet per second. We were seeing like 912 but we were getting such good accuracy, we didn't want to really mess with the thing. But you can tune this rifle up to get about 940, 950 feet per second out of these 25 grain pills. Uh, that's about standard. Um, 19 feet per second extreme spread over 25 shots, and then a 4.2 SD. So quite accurate. Um, but besides that, I'm just gonna take a few shots at 100. Eric's got a, a little shooting gallery comprised of Small tomatoes that are, I guess, cherry tomatoes or so. They're maybe inch and a quarter wide. Some little tiny potatoes and some rather large apples, which really shouldn't be much of a challenge if it's not too windy. But I uh, actually went through the process of sorting some of these pellets out. Um, 
like Eric mentioned earlier, we were seeing much better accuracy with sorted pellets and literally we were not weighing these. We were just looking at the uh, skirt and if the skirt was nice and round, it was a good pellet. Some of the skirts are really jacked up. They've got some pretty bad flat spots on them and down range at extended ranges with an air rifle, all that stuff is gonna come into play if you're talking about accuracy. But I'm just gonna single load these and we're gonna go from there and have a little bit of fun and see how uh, challenging this is gonna be. And I've dialed my optic up to uh, an elevation of 11 minutes. That's what I was seeing yesterday in the weather conditions that we had. So, you gonna spot for me? Yep, all right. So, I guess, I guess I'll shoot those apples real quick just to see where I'm at. Uh-oh. I'm gonna have to shoot the steel to see where I'm at. It's 11 minutes up. Turn the cameras on, everything starts going awry. Only for you. Only for me. <laughs> and you guys can't see this piece of steel, but I'm gonna shoot the steel off to the side here, just real quick. Okay. Huh, it's weird. Just a teeny tiny bit low. Pump it up to 11 and a half. All right, let's try that apple one more time. Well, that one, the wind must be blowing down there because it went left. I hit a potato. All right, forget those apples. It's just wanting me to shoot a smaller target. And man, we're still at over 200 bar. All right, I'm just going to shoot that ter uh, cherry tomato up on the top in there. Okay, send it. Hold a little bit for wind. Oh, pfft, right where I was holding. What the heck? It might have been maybe just a scotch low. <sighs> just left. Really? These are the sorted pellets, right? That's a long, yeah, it's a long shot. Yeah. Man, yesterday I was just stacking these things in at 100 yards. It looks like you might have hit it and it just didn't move. Try again. Just low. Dude. Like a, just a, maybe literally a scotch under the tomato. Man. Killing me here. I know, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Dude, this thing was just crazy yesterday. But I really wasn't running the cameras too much either. Uh, just low and left. Dude, what is going on? Yep. I need some wind flags. It's actually a little more, I mean, I say a little more breezy today. Yesterday we had like no wind when I was grouping this thing. I can't believe this. I can't hit this tomato. Low, low right. That was low right. You sure? Yeah. And this Opti, I mean, 18 power, I can just about see everything that's going on down there. Dude, I can't, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this at all. Look, just out of curiosity. Yeah. Look at the camera going. Go ahead. Just a little bit. I mean, it's a tiny amount of wind, but well, it should up here. be enough to matter. Yeah, and it could be different down there. Strange, isn't it? Hang on, let me get off the bench. Okay. Go. Just to the left. I cannot believe this. Well, hold to the right, I guess. I cannot believe this. I have been holding just over a little bit. That was dead on. Low left still. I just held high right. What is going on? We put around a lot of rounds to this thing, but dang, man. There you go. All right, let me just keep that hold. Man, that's crazy. This thing was Going dead to the one to the left. Nuts. Huh? All right, let me see. Let me just try that same hold again. Go. 
Got him. Good shot. All right. I mean, Good I'm having, center mass hit. I'm literally having a hole like an inch right and an inch high. Yeah, the wind and, could be playing with you. And I'm at 12 minutes. Yesterday, I was basically punching the center out of those targets. So, all right. Um, I guess I'll go down that line of tomatoes there. All right, go for it, man. Yep. Man, actually, <laughs> it shoots that tomato apart pretty good. Yeah, it's got um, 47 foot-pounds at an average of 912 feet per second. With a 25 grain pill, I mean, it's a surprising amount of energy for a 22 caliber air rifle. Yeah, not bad. Oh, just right. Yeah. Gum it. Man, I've been told that guys like who shoot bench rest, like air rifle and stuff, even at 25 meters, they've got five wind flags between the muzzle of the air rifle and the target. I mean, five wind flags, and here we don't have anything. Right, just just to the right. right. Dude. There's got to be some like crosswind or something weird going on down there. Just got to call it and deal with it, man. man. You were shooting those really good groups at 100, and that's why I wanted you to take the challenge here at 100, because figured you had more time behind it at this distance. And just that was high. just high. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you turn the cameras on, everything just goes crazy. I'm not doing anything different except just different weather conditions. You're on it. All right, let's see how long that holds up. <laughs> Just left. Just low. I mean, it's, yeah, left and low. It's crazy how much the wind will affect these little pills, you know, running down range. It is a tiny little projectile. Good. You're on. You're on it. Kind of got them on the low side. Yep. That's literally like, man, some of those tomatoes are only an inch. They're tiny. They Remember, your tiny. worst groups were inch and a half. So, yep. you know, your misses aren't surprising if the tomato's under an inch in diameter. Yep. You're you got on. it. Oh, you you shot the, uh, the, the. What, the tea stand? Yeah. The, what do you call it? The tea, well, the golf tea. Yeah, the golf tea. It. It split it like a like ah. an arrow. That's cool. All right, well, let's try that again. <laughs> All right. What? I'm not shooting very good. Let's go for an even smaller target. Why not? They aim small, miss small, right? Oh, okay. Hell oh, yeah. Now, if I was running the <laughs> if I was running the magazine, I might be able to get my shots off before the wind changes. Yep. Oh, I nicked it. <laughs> yep, you did. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, now, all right. now for some added challenge, you got to go for the little baby potatoes over there. Right. They kind of blend in with the hill a bit, so they're baby, a little harder to see. Baby potatoes. Yes, the tiny potatoes. And we've also got some little potato snipers up there on the hill. You have to find them, though. I hit them. All right, let's see. <laughs> I see one. All right, hang on a sec. You got him. Good shot. All right, I see the other one. All right, yep. There's I the other what, little I potato sniper did. up there. There's only about half of the potato sticking up over the cover. Go! Oh! Good shot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep. how, many, how many is there? Uh, I think there was only two that I had room for. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to look, actually. I'm behind the spotter here for Chad. Uh, there is one slightly up the hill. Past the row of tomatoes. Soon. Yeah, I mean, I see him. Yeah, take him out. Got him. Down. Good shot. All right, and then you got uh, potatoes on the stands, and then you got the apples. All right, which let I me... know the apples aren't as much of a challenge, but. You can go over there. I was really the trying to see what kind of damage these little pellets do at the you know extended ranges. No, no, he went flying. Yep. Oh, I got a few of the sorted ones left, so. You do. I mean, guys, like we've we've been shooting all this on just this one fill. And this, uh, the rifle's regulated at 160 bar, so we've still got 
Yeah, we're at like one, maybe 175, 180 right now after this entire video. I mean, how many rounds have we shot? Probably 80. Yeah, quite 80 a few. at least. So you get a, quite a few shots off of one uh, one fill, you know, up to um, a 250 bar. So take a few more shots. Good yeah, shot. Um, that was yes. a good center mass hit on the potato. Those good. potatoes, I, you know, I thought that the little tomatoes would come um, apart better, but the potatoes seem to be coming apart better. Well, let me try that one tomato that's just kind of sitting above that second apple there. Got you. Okay, send it. Man, that that one came apart really good. I can see where it'd be a very viable little critter getter. Oh yeah. And I'm talking like accuracy at range. Well, I've heard sure. from some folks who like to shoot squirrels that they keep the tails as trophies. I think we should make like a, a squirrel fur coat or something like that. A squirrel tail fur coat? That's a lot of squirrels, man. Maybe we could send it to the guy who makes the squallets. Have you ever seen that? They're I want literally... a squallet. Like, of course you do. Uh, yeah, I want to I wanna go to get like <laughs> food one day and show up at the place and break out my squalet and break out the plastic and go, here you are, madam. Like it's, in a fancy restaurant. It's literally a squirrel that has been taxidermied and it has a zipper on its back and it is a wallet. <laughs> Custom hairdos. Custom hairdos, boy. All right. Yep, you got it. Yeah, you're on it, man. All right, I literally got three. You, you've made like 10 hits in a row. And we got a little bit of rain moving in. That's fine. Yep. Yep. You're on it. I mean, what a ton of fun. Let's see what it'll do to one of those apples at 100 yards. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Dang. Split that apple apart pretty good. Surprising, actually. I Holy cow. I didn't quite expect that to happen. We go for that one on the right. Yeah, hit uh, the one on the right. Yeah. Yep, you hit kind of low on it, but okay. you're in there. Dang. Let me fire one more shot. That that first one split apart really nice. Yep. Oh, that was a little low. I think you just grazed it. Well, you know, probably got hit by a raindrop or something down range. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that split apart. All right. Cool. I think you guys get the idea. This is a supremely accurate air rifle. And like Eric said, these are literally hand assembled and hand tested. And every single one of these things is guaranteed before it leaves the factory and it goes through your door. I mean, and we've shot a bunch of air, air rifles, you know, from various manufacturers over the years. And this is, this is the most accurate small bore that I have ever shot on the channel and tested. And it's just incredible. Uh, just a workmanship that goes into this thing, and it is so much fun. I mean, you can literally target shoot in your backyard, not disturb anybody. It's very quiet. I mean, there's just not a whole lot to dislike about a setup like this. Um, they are expensive. Uh, even the baseline models are still well over $1,000, um, but they do not have the carbon fiber wrap barrel moderator, nor the carbon fiber tank, or the nice laminate stock. Um, but I was told that they are just as accurate as this rifle is here, just they don't have as many of the nicer features, but there's no degradation in accuracy. But I mean, sub MOA performance at hundred yards with an air rifle, what more do you need? I mean, this is just crazy, but hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, just check the uh, description box below. We'll have a link to all the spreadsheets with all the data that we collected on this particular rifle. Just wanna give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters and those of you who purchased man cans. Uh, you guys rock, you really keep us going here on the channel and it's with your support that we can keep doing what we're doing. And um, Stay tuned, we've got a lot more on the way, more air gun content, more gun gripes, more firearms facts, more gunsmithing content, more special projects and other range reviews and such. Um, thanks again, guys, and stay tuned. We'll uh, have a lot more on the way. See you next time.